now. ARB Holdings has reported a rise in full year revenue. Joining us now for more on the company's results is Byron Nichols. He's chief executive of ARB Holdings. Good to have you with us, as always. Okay. For a company that uh, has uh, such interesting operations, it's interesting to know that the strikes and the ongoing sluggish economic impact here in South Africa hasn't had a very strong impact on your numbers. Yes, yeah, it has had a, a material impact, uh, and I'd like it to have had no impact, but, but the truth of the matter, and I think we signaled it in our commentary, is that we did see a, a marked slowdown in uh, our sales, particularly from our electrical division, in the fourth quarter, and that was a, the direct impact of the, of the strike action. And profits as well. When you were here six months ago, HIPs were up 35%, they're up 27% for the year as a whole. We know we mustn't have a straight line yeah. kind of analysis, and Whitey Basson taught us that yesterday, but it still is a, a, an issue that it appears as though things slowed down quite a lot in the second half. Yes, yeah, certainly, if you, look, if you look at the two divisions, we've got the electrical division, which is the largest contributor. Uh, it was hit by the, by the mining strikes, and, and probably to a greater extent, the, the NUMSA strike. They're both from a supply side in the sense that many of our large cable manufacturers, uh, yeah, their supplies were disrupted, so we struggled to get product. And similarly, we anticipated that to some extent and stocked up, um, but what we found was on the demand side of the, of the business, you know, several of, the, of, the, of our big customers, you know, the mining sector, the manufacturing sector, were equally hard hit, and therefore the demand uh, eased off. That was also aggravated by the plethora of public holidays in April, the elections in May, so uh, certainly the second half was a, was a more challenging period for the electrical side. The lighting side continued to steam ahead. Why are you doing, as far as your share price is concerned, you really are pumping. I mean, from 3 Rand to 7 Rand 80 in the last three years. Another special dividend this time around. Mm -hmm. You've got a bit of cash on your balance sheet. Are you not finding a better use for the cash, i.e., pay a special dividend or buy back shares? You've yeah. decided to pay a special dividend. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the board often debates the, the issue of share buybacks. The reality with, with a small cap company like ours that's recently listed is we've got quite tight liquidity. You know, if we were to go into the market and do any sort of share buyback on any meaningful scale, we would absolutely just take out all the liquidity in the share whatsoever. Um, so the decision will be made to return the excess cash in the form of a, a special divvy. Mm. Interesting reading through your numbers. It's uh, noted that you purchased new property in Nelspreet as well as in Rustenburg. Rustenburg, mm. that's a bit odd given the fact that the strikes have been uh, impacted that economy quite strongly there? Yes, yeah, certainly. We, we, we acquired a business... Uh, in fact, just pre Maricon, a couple of months pre Maricon, so in that sense, we got our timing exactly wrong. Mm. Uh, and, and there was a piece of undeveloped land, uh, it was Sorry, operating pre from Maricon. You're talking pre about 2012? Yeah. Uh -huh. so, so, 1st of July 2012, in fact. Uh, and the business was operating from, from rented premises, uh, and but owned a, an undeveloped piece of land. We took a decision to develop that land. Yeah, we commenced that this year. Um, the, the Rustenburg operation certainly felt the impact of the strikes, but, but the team down there did a, did a superb job in diversifying the revenue stream away from pure mining. Uh, and in fact, through the, through the strike action and, and through the course of this year, um, that branch, in fact, made a small profitable contribution to the group. So yeah, on the back of that, on the back of you know, what we see as being uh, a larger market opportunity than purely the mining uh, community in, in Rustenburg, uh, we felt confident enough to go and develop that the infrastructure and rather operate from my own premises than in rent. pay rent. Where, where's the revenue stream coming from? 14% growth in this kind of economy in your kind of mm. area is a, is, is a, fair, a fair whack that you're managing to put onto the books. Where is it, what areas is it coming from? Yeah, again, I think you've got to look at the two divisions separately. If you look at the, the lighting business, smaller contributor but, but grew revenues 25% for the, for the full year. And, and that's the switch to LEDs, is that helping still? That's certainly partly part of it. I think it's more a market share gain. Um, you know, we've seen some of the some of the other players in that in the market come out with, with some pretty uh, challenging numbers in, in, in recent times. The, Euro, the Eurolux brand is, is gaining prominence, gaining market share. Um, so that's particularly in retail in the in the DIY chains. Uh, you know, some of the big large listed DIY chains. Seen incredible uh, demand for the Eurolux product, and that's been very successful. On the electrical side, uh, no secrets to say that mining manufacturing. Government-related revenue, um, very flat, if not somewhat down on last year. Areas of growth, export markets, um, and other the counter cash sales, uh, which all always enjoy. It's, it's higher margin business. Okay, you don't give away settlement discount, and there's obviously no bad, bad at risk. Is Eurolux produced here? No. So you're importing it Import all? Import the product. Mm. And you, you say it's gaining market share despite yeah. the weaker rent. Yeah. That's interesting. Are you getting support from... Uh, your overseas principles? I wish we were, um, but the reality is there's no local lighting manufacturers. So 
all the product that finds its way into South Africa onto the shelves is imported. So, yeah, from that perspective, the playing field level. Byron, you've done well over the past uh, few years. Is this share price now getting to the level where you're getting a bit worried that you're on a treadmill? How you uh, meet expectations? We certainly like to believe not. Um, but as one of my colleagues said to me uh, just recently, you know, today's achievements become tomorrow's standards. Mm. Uh, and, and there's no doubt. You know, the, you know, we, look, we look ahead uh, and we say, you know, although hopefully the, the strikes, I think, of the past, the mining sector has you know, hopefully come back on stream, um, you know, NDP elections are behind us, um, we'd like to believe at some point we'll, we'll see you know, all of those coming through and, and, and some pickup in demand and activity. Uh, as yet, we haven't seen that come through. So, you know, when we look ahead, we do say, you know, where is the growth going to come from? You know, it's no different to where we were sitting you know, this time last year or the year before. Um, but that's our challenge as, you know, as executives, is to go and find those pockets of growth to make sure we continually um, gain market share. You know, we, our, our chairman you know, has a famous saying, and he always asks us, what, what do we think our market share is? And we say, well, you know, we suspect it's 10, 15 percent. And he says, so don't speak to me about the macro yeah. environment. There's another 85 percent. Go out and get it. Mm. Byron Nichols is the chief executive of ARB Holdings.